The speaker for the next session is Mr. Gautam Datta, Senior Director, Marketing, Siemens Industry Software. He has been <coughs> in the industry for over 28 years, and out of this, 23 years were spent in the field of CAD CAM, CAE, PLM, as business consultant and sales professional. Gautam has a BTEC in Mechanical Engineering from Delhi College of Engineering and an MTEC in Aircraft Production Engineering from IIT Madras. Please welcome Gautam on stage. So I would like to uh, start uh, my um, uh, speech with uh, my half an hour with a uh, small quote that uh, discovery is what everybody can see, but uh, innovation is what we can think of. So I think we can see most of the things, what most of the needs that we have, we probably know what to do, but we probably do not always think of how to do it. So my half an hour is about how, okay? So products are getting smarter. We all have seen many, many uh, discussions about uh, products. By the way, my session is focused on discrete manufacturing, and uh, that's why probably some of the process issues may not be uh, relevant uh, because when we are talking about discrete engineering, discrete manufacturing, most of the products are getting smarter and they are getting more connected. Uh, smart innovations are transforming every industry, whether be it cars that are autonomous, whether it is medical devices, implants which are customized to a particular person, pilotless planes, energy that self-optimizes, we have coffee that is made just for you based on your taste, which have been collected through big data. Electronics and semiconductors have helped us create sensors which can stick on a patient's body like a tattoo for uh, regular medical monitoring. Industrial machines which can make themselves, who better but Siemens can stake a claim on that where we have factories in Auburn and in Chengdu in China, where things are made by machines and most of the machines talk to each other and optimize. And there are ships which are sailed by onshore captains because of the hazardous conditions. Now, in this kind of a scenario, where things are changing very, very fast, the question and the observation that I would like to make is the products, business models, and legacy positions that we all had, the, comp uh, the, the companies, uh, and their competitive edge probably are no, no more secure. And we need to look at what is it that we need to do to make sure that we are ready for the near future. So in that, because we are talking about new age of innovation, just a quick question. How many of us are below 50 here? So I think more than 50%. You have 20 odd more years. This age of innovation is yours. So I would encourage you that knowing what to do and the list of what we need to do is probably not sufficient. It is the time has come that we need to go back and think of how to do it, which means we need to have time to think, which means we need to change the way we work. We have to uh, find ways of thinking. We have to find of reducing our transaction time, hand it over to more smarter solutions and processes within our respective organizations and think and come to such various, various experiments that we need to lead, which will lead us to our innovative ways and products of doing things differently and better. So how do we do it? That's the, that's the discussion. There are transformational forces behind all these smart innovations which are changing our country. If you look at the left side, we have spoken enough. If you look at the right side, the economies are telling us that trillions of dollars are getting unleashed and unlocked by using these transformational forces. It is not just individually they are important. The bigger things happen when in combination these technologies are used for uh, at arriving at the solutions, at the technologies and processes that can change the way we work. So how these transformation forces can improve our ability to innovate? We start with an idea, that is there is a need, and then we use that idea. 
And today, IoT, Internet of Things, is giving us the feedback when we are using these uh, products and services in the market as to what to do with it. But is that sufficient? Knowing what to do, is that sufficient? Because um, arriving at an understanding that we need to innovate and arriving at a solution as to how to innovate is two different things. And I'll give you a quick example. When I was, many of us here would have done that. When I was young, 12, 13 years, we f I felt, you know, I should learn cricket. And as every kid in the, in the Indian subcontinent does, we, we, we went for a coaching institute. And here was one coach who told us that watch the hand of the bowler and see how he spins or swings the ball. The seam will tell you how to face it and rest will be followed by the muscle memory which have to come out of continuous practices. It did not give me an answer as to how should I watch that hand and how do I watch the seam. 20 years later, once in a trip to America, I have a friend who coaches kids for uh, ba uh, the baseball and here he was coaching very, very small kids at the age of five or six and he drew markers on the baseball with colored marker and he was teaching them how to face the spin ball. And that's when I realized that if this was the innovative process 20 years later, maybe I would not have done engineering, right? So, so it is the question that I'm saying is probably what to know is not sufficient and how to know it is equally or probably more, more important. And realizing that innovation is what, what uh, you know, energized us, which encouraged us to, to seek these questions, seek the questions of how to make sure that we can walk around next year while the camera tracks us. You know, it's a how, how part of it. So digitalization is the strategy which, which creates the digital thread as a proactive agent to drive new business opportunities, bringing in all the product knowledge and process knowledge of an organization. We spoke about this last year. Last year, the topic was digital digitalization. Next year, I think the topic is digital enterprise. Am I right? So probably we would, we would be talking more and continuously talking about it, how digitalization can help us achieve innovation. And digitalization can bring together these three phases of, of finding a problem or defining a problem and then finding a solution from ideation, realization, and utilization. And that is what we in Siemens PLM are calling smart innovation platform. A smart innovation portfolio which helps us achieve these four major needs, that is bringing people together, giving them the right information at the right time, helping them create intelligent models and question it, helping them converge between the virtual and the physical world so that whichever actions we take are first time right and they are simulated to give us the results so that we are confident about the results that they will give us and they are adaptive enough so that even the small user can implement it or it can evolve with the changing need of the business. And these are the four pillars of the smart innovation uh, portfolio that we created as a model, as a framework, as to how to achieve this innovation. So the innovation is not some, some kind of a, you know, a medicine that we decide we start taking and we will become innovative. There has to be a process to it. And this brings me to another example. All of us have heard of Usain Bolt, right? One of the fastest runners. And we have heard of Michael jo Johnson, the earlier record holder. They, these two gentlemen have very different styles of running. Mr. Bolt runs with very long strides, although both are tall, but he has very, very long strides. Michael Johnson has exceptionally shorter strides, but high speed. So m when, when Usain Bolt trains, obviously he's going to train on something which, on which he's weak. That means his speed. When Michael Johnson trains, he's obviously going to work on his strides. And that's how they become the fastest. One of the factors of running is, if you go back and study sprinting, is how fast your feet comes off the ground after hitting it. Because that's what gives you the momentum of moving forward in speed. So it's a combination of drag, your muscle strength, your technique, 
the technology goods like the shoes that you're wearing and all these pieces come together to create. So obviously what is the elements of innovation for Usain Bolt is different from the elements of innovation for for Michael Johnson. So that's the point I'm trying to make. All of us here working for different organizations, there cannot be a single mantra of innovation. Finding out the need, so that's one definite uh, first step. What is it that I want to achieve? With what? And therefore, what are the gaps? And this is where I would like to bring a point, quoting Achut, who spoke about startups. There are many pieces in our innovation uh, journey, there are many pieces in our di digitalization process which may be fulfilled by the startups of this, this country. And that's where we have to start new partnerships to complete the digitalization process of your respective uh, businesses and, 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 and organizations wherever you are. I'll make an, I'll like to bring another example. A couple of days ago, Indian government uh, defined the new uh, shipbuilding policy and how they would like to promote shipbuilding uh, business in India. They have offered very large um, money incentive of uh, giving discounts or, or offers or, or uh, specialized offers of 10 to 20 percent in monetary terms if it is an Indian shipbuilding organization which would like to take on a global tender and fight it. However, they have brought in a constraint that they have to deliver within a specified time of three years. So either we as, you know, if we belong to that industry, we are ready to take those incentives and get into the system and then question us how to improve the processes so that I can deliver within three years or we do not take the risk and, and, and not participate in this, uh, in, the, in these uh, development ventures. So that's the choice we have to make. That's the choice we have to go and think that how do I make those changes which will make me confident of delivering within the specified time frames so that I can take advantage of these incentives that Government of India has given it to me to be part of an emerging new innovative field of shipbuilding. So with these points, let me go deeper into each one of these four quickly and explain what does it mean. First important pillar was the engaged users. It means to provide a platform which intuitively not only makes them to do the work and tasks collaboratively, but also helps them to learn. It also means to have the information at the right place at the right time with the right security and the right access. So this is a need which I think all of us can easily relate with because 70% of our time is actually spent on finding the right data so that we can make the right decision. If you ask yourself, why is it that we, lay, we delay in taking decisions, it's because we are not confident about taking a decision with half-baked inputs and data that is available to us. That's the point. Second, um, we also create a, as I said, socio-technical network which helps us self-organize our education and it brings in some element of knowledge management, brings in a great element of reuse of the corporate data and also to maintain uh, knowledge of people who will be leaving the organizations after spending a lot of time and so that we can hold that intellectual property within the organizations. So this is few examples of how engaged users is important as a pillar towards achieving um, innovation. Electronic work instructions, work instructions given to specific person at that specific workstation, collaborating with the suppliers because after all we are going to work together and the entire product architecture being modeled so that we don't have to define every time what we have to do. The second pillar, important pillar was the intelligent models which help us accurately define what is, what is real and simulate what is possible. Think about if you had time to make alternative studies and or if I may call engineering experiments, chances are that we would achieve a better result than the before and which is what innovation is all about. So how do we achieve these multiple engineering experiments? How do we achieve simulation of these multiple experiments? But by using the intelligent models. We also in other language do call them as digital twin. 
digital twin is not just a representative uh, representation of an engineering component or a product, but it has all the other information that goes with it in terms of material, processes, uh, you know, collaborative needs, and people coming together to work. Intelligent models in action, if you see, are how um, a, a virtual simulation and a physical testing of new components and products and assemblies can help us create, uh, improve quality, reduce warranty costs, so that we know whatever we are making, we are making correct the first time. We are not wasting time. And now bring in the shorter life cycles of products, this becomes imperative, because we don't have time to, f to make a mistake. We cannot afford to make mistakes in our businesses, in our respective businesses. The importance of third pillar, or the realized products, is, uh, is closing the loop between the ideation and realization, if you remember, that th those three pieces that we spoke about. How to integrate the virtual world and the physical world. If I have planned a product, how do I manufacture it so that I can not only manufacture it with the best efficiency, but also whatever processes I have adopted are known to me in terms of knowledge so that next cycle I can work on it and improve it. And also, we, I can you know, remove the unwanted, um, unnecessary activities and make it more and more efficient. So this is the place where we close the loop between uh, idea and realize. This is where I close the loop between what to do and how to do, and make sure my how to do is so well defined that, uh, that I do it correct the first time. Uh, another example of how realizing pr realized products is in action is when you're commissioning a machine, there are solutions today which can help you commission it virtually. Your PLCs, your robots, and the entire set of machinery that you're commissioning can be virtually simulated on a workstation before you attempt to do it live on the shop floor, thereby giving you all that extra time and reduce any kind of collision or accident on the shop floor and reduce the commissioning to days instead of weeks, thereby improving the efficiency. So you don't have to replicate the process. You just have to take the, um, the, the, the controller and physically shift it after you have uh, virtually tested it and it starts working on the shop floor as it should. There are a variety of solutions available. I am not going to go deeper on that. These are more conceptual right now. Of course, these are working many places of the world within, our, within the Siemens and within the Siemens customer organizations. Last but not the least is the fourth pillar which talks about the system being adaptive. That means embracing open standards. I think there was enough discussion in the morning on the openness and the need of openness so that we can talk to each other, talk to variety of systems, bring in variety of systems to talk to each other and, and work uh, together and collaborate across organizations, across the value chain. And it is scalable to start from many people. Many customers have asked us, is this concept uh, relevant for small and medium business segment? Because that is the growth engine of India. That is where innovation has to come in if we have to move make in India in its true spirit and size. And f adaptability of such systems, whether it is a single user, 20 users, or m thousands of users across organizations, is a very important factor, which is both in terms of investment and time. To make these four pillars more understandable, I have an example here of one of the innovations that I, explain, I showed you in the beginning, which is a medical implant uh, from its, you know, um, uh, from, from scan to the final product of implant, which is specific to a particular uh, patient. So. Introducing Image to Implant Process Automation. Siemens answer to help medical device companies deliver personalized products and therapies efficiently, cost-effectively, and accurately. 
Powered by our PLM platform and software components, the image to implant process starts with diagnostic imaging and ends with medical devices matched to the patient's anatomy. The entire process leverages diverse Siemens expertise in technology in medical imaging, image analysis, CAD, CAM, quality, validation, and data management. The PLM platform, the hub for systems integration, manages data inputs and outputs, orchestrates workflows, and captures review and approval of records. This occurs in a secure, virtual, easily accessible, and mobile environment via the online collaboration workflow. The process also gives medical device companies the ability to collaborate directly with healthcare providers on a per case basis. After a case is created, the workflow for the entire process can be automated. Alternate steps and sub-process templates are built to accommodate decisions made throughout the process. Once a case is qualified, the image segmentation application in Siemens CAD software translates a patient's medical image into a 3D model. Surgical planning is developed from this model, which can capture and automate the digital simulation of the surgical procedure and can help specify the planned use of either stock or personalized components. In NX, a change to the CAD model can be made quickly and accurately while automatically propagating updates to downstream applications. Once the surgical plan is reviewed and approved by a surgeon, Siemens CAE software is used to verify product performance using digital simulation of an associated engineering model. A predefined CAE model template accommodates any updates to the CAD shape, and the CAE simulation is re-executed for personalized verification. An associated CAM model is then updated. This contains NC tool paths for machining the part. A digital simulation of the NC program can be rerun as needed to ensure there are no tooling interferences. To support quality control processes in manufacturing, an associated computer-aided quality assurance model is updated. This model contains a program template for a robotic CMM to validate that the physical shape of the part matches the design within specified tolerances. While the image to implant process allows for any customization, predefined templates are used in order to constrain the variation and minimize the effort needed to re-engineer, verify, and validate each individual case with specific personalization. The outcome can be a personalized implant that's engineered to order quickly, accurately, and efficiently. So that gives us an idea how digitalization can help us make an innovative solution for uh, image to implant for customized prosthetics. And this is in practice. This is being done as we speak world over. And I'm sure as we move forward, you would hear more about it, um, you know, from the, from the market experience. I have another example. This is closer to our understanding in India. This is, uh, as usual, the most popular vertical uh, of automotive. Before um, Raj starts the movie, if we can, um, yeah, don't start it now. Let me explain because this does not have uh, voice with it. Essentially, the situation here is that uh, uh, the power of the engine has increased in a vehicle, and now you are to take a decision regarding its cooling. So there is the, this is the cooling circuit where you have the uh, radiator, the fan, and the, and, the, and the water pump and everything, and uh, now you have to take your engineering decisions as to how do I cater, with, cater to the, to the um, uh, higher power of the engine and improve the cooling process. So we have a first step called 1D, a single dimension representation of the schematic of this with real data that have been captured from an existing vehicle which uses this existing old power. And then I increase the power requirement and power input to this 1D analytical um, uh, ex representation and then come to a point which tells me that this is this cooling is seriously 
uh, you know, less than what is required if my power of engine is increased. And this gives me a input towards what kind of changes we have to make. And in this case, the example that I'm showing, um, the answer is that I add another uh, radiator. When I add another radiator, I require additional fan. And how, to, how do I get into the um, existing setup of the radiator fan combination to accommodate the second fan? And when I put the second fan, the entire assembly or the plastic uh, uh, frame which holds the fans need to be redesigned. And that system allows me to add the additional fan, analyze the new plastic frame, analyze, help me analyze the um, you know, plastic injection of that new plastic frame and eventually give me the total assembly, including the quality and testing procedures as to how I can arrive at this change scenario. Now, this is another digitalization process where I take an existing design and add the changes to face the new customer requirement. Raj? So this is the 1D circuit which gives me this kind of results, and I analyze it, and then I come to a conclusion that I need an additional radiator, and based on this additional radiator requirement, I have to redesign the, the uh, fan holding unit. So from a single fan, if you can see, I have to now geometrically manipulate the casing to accommodate the second fan, and I make those experimental decisions. I make those changes in the physical form of the, uh, of the fan holding assembly quickly. And then I have to now analyze for how these two fans are going to help me new set of heat transfer um, calculations. And this is what I do using the CAE. come to decisions, then I use uh, a separate module of mold making to create the new plastic mold for the twin fan plastic holding frame. And I analyze the frame for its injection molding process, come to a conclusion what kind of small design improvements that I require so that I can, that's the simulation of the plastic injection and I come to a point to, to those red areas are the areas of concern. I go back and change the engineering uh, uh, geometry for the frame. And then now it helps me after several iterations, which are done on the computer, not on a physical prototype, saving time and money and effort and whatever. I come to a conclusion that this is going to be my um, final frame. And you can see it's been physically tested as well for its frames, uh, anchor points, to arrive at a conclusion that yes, it's going to hold the assembly together. And parallelly, it is going to help me arrive at what kind of additional costs. Because whenever I'm making these decisions, cost is escalating, because obviously, it's now a more complicated tool. Um, and, and that helps me with the cost variances. And so this is a, a digitalized process of how a new product gets born based on an existing model where customer's uh, requirement has changed. So the point I'm trying to make is the sciences of product development, which is CAD modeling, CAE, which is simulation, or analysis of plastic flow, or uh, geometry, or costing. The science is the same. The implementations in both these scenarios are different, giving us the answers that a person is seeking and achieving that innovation in totally disparate organizations and businesses. So I would like to highlight here that when we seek answers in our respective businesses, the answers or challenges are not when a question is, what do you want? I'm looking for a 3D modeling software. I'm looking for a simulation solution. I'm looking for a costing solution. I'm looking for a data management solution. Probably is not the right answer. The answer there is, I am looking for something that can help me quickly analyze my heat transferability. I'm looking for a 
framework which can give me a variety of geometric options, and then capability of analyzing it in terms of what kind of tooling I require. So the answers are different from, we, we straight away going to a solution where we have to generally ask the question. With that, I come to an end of uh, my um, half an hour. Essentially, I wanted to give a scenario of why it is important to have a framework which gives us the opportunity to innovate and which can give us the ability to answer those questions and, and, and achieve innovation. I mean, innovation is not a medicine that we can have or you know, gulp and, and suddenly we'll become innovative. Thank you.